Hello everybody, uh, my name is V Narendra Kumar and we are from NRK Academy. And today we have this wonderful chapter called 38 chapter and we have this the development of doctrinal that the whole belief system and of, of Christianity. The development of doctrinal doctrinal Christianity. And this is from this wonderful book called The Short History of the World by H. G. Wells. So let's start. The development of doctrinal Christianity. In the four Gospels, we find the personality and teachings of Jesus, but very little, very little of the dogmas of the Christian church. The dogmas, you know, the blind beliefs. It is in the epistles, a series of writings by the immediate followers of Jesus, that the broad lines of Christian belief are laid down. Chief among the makers of Christian doctrine was St. Paul. He had never seen Jesus nor heard him preach. Paul's name was originally Saul and he was conspicuous at first as an active persecutor of the little band of disciples after the crucifixion. Then he was suddenly converted to Christianity and he changed his name to Paul. He was a man of great intellectual vigor and deeply and passionately interested in the religious movements of the time. He was well versed in Judaism and in the Mithraism and Alexandrian religion of the day. He carried over many of their ideas and terms of expression into Christianity. He did very little to enlarge or develop the original teaching of Jesus, the teaching of the kingdom of heaven, but, but he taught that Jesus was not the only, was not only the promised Christ, the promised leader of the Jews, but also that his death was a sacrifice, like the deaths of the ancient sacrificial victims of the primordial civilizations for the redemption of mankind. When religions flourish side by side, they tend to pick up each other's ceremonial and outward peculiarities. You know, the, the rituals and all that. Buddhism, for example, in China has now almost the same sort of temples and priests and uses as Taoism, which follows in the teachings of Laozi. Yet the original teachings of Buddhism and Taoism were almost flatly opposed. And it reflects no doubt or discredit upon the essentials of Christian teaching that it took over, not merely such formal things as the shaven priest, the votive offering, the altars, candles, chanting and images of the Alexandrian and Mithraic faiths, but adopted even their devotional phrases and their theological ideas. All these religions were flourishing side by side with many less prominent cults. Each was seeking adherence and there must have been a constant going and coming of convert, converts between them. Sometimes one or other would be in favor with the government. But Christianity was regarded with more suspicion than its rivals because, like the Jews, its adherents would not perform acts of worship to the god Caesar. This made it a seditious religion, quite apart from the revolutionary spirit of the teachings of Jesus himself. Saint Paul familiarized his disciples with the idea that Jesus, like Osiris, was a God who died to rise again and give men immortality. And presently, the spreading Christian community was greatly torn by complicated theological disputes about the relationship of this God, Jesus, to God, the Father of mankind. The Arians ta taught that Jesus was divine, but distant from and inferior to the Father. The Sabellians taught that Jesus was merely an aspect of the Father and that God was a Jesus and Father at the same time, just as a man may be a father and an artificer at the same time. And the Trinitarians taught a more subtle doctrine that God was both one and three, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. For a time it seemed Arianism would prevail over its rivals and then after disputes, violence and wars. The Trinitarian formula became the accepted formula of all Christendom. It may be found in its 
completest expression in the Athanasian Creed. We offer no comment on these controversies here. They do not sway history as the personal teaching of Jesus sways history. The personal teaching of Jesus does seem to mark a new phase in the moral and spiritual life of our race. Its insistence upon the universal fatherhood of God and the implicit, implicit brotherhood of all men. Its insistence upon the sacredness of every human personality as a living temple of God was to have the profoundest effect upon all the subsequent social and political life of mankind. With Christianity, with the spreading, te uh, spreading teachings of Jesus, a new respect appears in the world for man as man. It may be true, as hostile critics of Christianity have urged, that St. Paul preached obedience to slaves. But it is equally true that the whole spirit of the teachings of Jesus, preserved in the Gospels, was against the subjugation of man by man. And still more distinctly was Christianity opposed to such outrages upon human dignity as the gladiatorial combats in the arena. Throughout the first two centuries after Christ, the Christian religion spread throughout the Roman Empire, weaving together an ever-growing multitude of converts into a new community of ideas and will. The attitude of the emperors varied between hostility and tolerance, toleration. There were attempts to suppress this new faith in both the second and third centuries. And finally, in 303 and the following years, a great persecution under the emperor Diocletian the considerable accumulations of church property were seized. All Bibles and religious writings were confiscated and destroyed. Christians were put out of the protection of the law and many executed. The destruction of the books is particularly notable. It shows how the power of the written word in holding together the new faith was appreciated by the authorities. These book religions, Christianity and Judaism, were religions that educated. Their continued existence depended very largely on people being able to read and understand their doctrinal ideas. The older religions had made no such appeal to the personal intelligence. In the ages of barbaric confusion that were now at hand in Western Europe, it was the Christian church that was mainly instrumental in preserving, preserving the tradition of learning. The persecution of Diocletian failed completely to suppress the growing Christian community. In many provinces, it was ineffective because the bulk of the population and many of the officials were Christian. In 317, an edict of toleration was issued by the associated emperor Galerius and in 324, Constantine the Great, a friend and on his deathbed a baptized a convert to Christianity became sole ruler of the Roman world. He abandoned all divine pretensions and put Christian symbols on the shields and banners of his troops. In a few years, Christianity was securely established as the official religion of the empire. The competing religions disappeared or were absorbed with extraordinary celerity and in 300, Theodos, uh, Theodosius the Great caused the great statue of Jupiter um, Serapis Sarap, uh, at Alexandria to be destroyed. From the outset of the 5th century onward, the only priests or temples in the Roman Empire were Christian priests and temples. And that is the way Christianity developed. It's a beautiful chapter. Now we may go to the next 39 chapter, the barbarians break the empire into east and west in the next video. Thank you so much.